Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowen of Bowen Small Engine. And guys, I am continuing in this series, if you will, in regards to uh, this three and a half horsepower cool bore Briggs and Stratton. That's from the early 70s, okay? Um, in a prior video, I had ground the valves and I was explaining to you guys what you potentially want to look for with contact on your valve face, okay, in relation to the seat. Now, I showed you in the prior video why it was imperative that you cut your seats or grind your seats as well as grind your valves. Now, with that being said, any time that you grind your valves, you're actually taking material away from the valve, okay, which is pretty common sense. So, in regards to that, your face contact, okay, can potentially be a little higher than what uh, you may potentially want, all right? Howsomever, you don't want it so high that it's actually hitting your margin, okay? And you'll see here momentarily that this particular engine is going to run just fine, and I'll show you why. In the other video, I showed you that when you basically grind a valve and then you try to stick it inside your engine, that your seat may potentially have the uh, contact area really high. So you have to get a valve seat cutter to basically remove material so that you can have your contact in your valve face where it should properly be. I'm going to demonstrate that here and show you potentially why it's so important. Now guys, honestly I'm doing this a little aggressively so that the line is going to be more visible for you to see on camera. <laughs> you really don't have to be this aggressive. I'm just doing it so that there's no doubt you guys will be able to see the line definitively. So if you look carefully, and I'll try to get this in camera, you can see that line is almost perfectly in the center. Slightly higher in center, but ideally it's perfect. Okay, This is going to work just fine. So, you might ask, why would you lap a valve if you have such perfect um, contact on the face? And I'll answer that for you very simply. If you use valve lapping compound, you actually can increase your compression. All right, That's why a lot of people do that. Now, with that being said, the engine would run just fine the way that it currently is with nothing more than grinding the valves and cutting the seats but because people are so sold on the idea of lapping valves I'm going to show you this contact area once the valves have been properly lapped in I personally like the vacuum sticks I think they do a better job than your standard old-fashioned <laughs> valve lap, okay? And I've got several of them, and guys, this is not my phone number anymore, so <laughs> don't even attempt to uh, reach me by that number. I generally start out with a real fine valve lapping compound. I prefer clover, and typically it's the 280 grit, yeah, 280 grit. I apologize for the dogs in the background, guys. They've been seeing rabbits and they're going crazy. Um, it doesn't take much. A lot of people will apply a lot of lapping compound, and that's not necessary. As you guys can see, just going to coat over top 
of this um, layout fluid. And I'm being a little generous with it. It doesn't really take a lot, but I'll be generous. You don't want to get any on the stem, guys. I'll try to raise the camera up slightly so you guys can see this better. I apologize for the mess in the background, guys. There you go. Now, generally speaking, I'll wet the end of the suction uh, cup. Apply it. And it doesn't really take much, guys. You'll see that I lift it ever so often. <laughs> and as you guys can see, sometimes it can be a burger to stay on. These older valves, what can I say guys? I may be forced to use <laughs> the older sticks. Alright. <laughs> Here we go. I do actually prefer the vacuum though. You guys are actually going to see how nice that valve lapped in just with the 280 grip. I, of course, can go all the way up to a thousand if I choose to do so. Generally speaking, though, I'll stop around four to six hundred grip. Now if you guys look, that line is a lot more apparent than what it has been. So I could potentially just apply the 400 grit, but I try to always wipe everything down before I do that. So we're going to wipe off the 280. Not that it's really imperative, but it's just a force of habit for me, guys. And now we're going to apply the 400. Like I said, I could go four, six, and then a thousand, but it's not necessary on these engines. They're pretty forgiving. I try to always use silicone carbide. I love this bow lapping compound. In my opinion, it's probably the best you can get. Okay? You will pay for it. <laughs> I will tell you that. It's not cheap. But it does do a better job than typically your other brands. Now, like I said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put the 400 grit silicone carbide on. And I'm using actually way too much at this point, guys, and I apologize for that. This brush really soaked it up. You really don't have to have a lot. But this will suffice. Once again, make sure none is on the stem. And as you guys can see, the stem is in perfect shape. There's no grit can't stress that enough. You do not want to wear out your valve guides. I do have other stoppers. I wanted to mention that, guys, for this uh, vacuum um, stick, but honestly, this one's a bit bigger. So we're just going to use the old school <laughs> lapping stick. 
Now I'm only doing the intake because honestly it's the same procedure for the exhaust. Howsomever, for this exhaust valve, I am going to put in a valve guide before I actually grind the, or cut the seats. Okay, so bear that in mind, guys. Uh, I didn't use the go no go gauge, and it seemed like it was sticking. It probably would be okay, but you know I'm, I'm going to use caution, and I'm just going to go ahead and put in a valve guide on the exhaust side. There are plenty of videos on YouTube showing how to actually use the tools that Briggs provide for the valve guide. And uh, I gotta be honest with you guys, I think that uh, they're spot on. There's there's nothing I could improve on in those videos. Um, they're very informative. You can seek them out, okay? Um, basically, I, I know at least three, okay? people that have done it and I think they do an excellent job like I said if you if you look into it you're very quickly going to find those videos I had no issues whatsoever uh, when I was looking up how to properly uh, put in a valve guide in a, a three and a half horsepower um, L head engine okay so without further ado guys we want to go ahead and lap this valve in with the 400 grit And that's what you want. You can hear the difference in the change. And to be honest, I'm sure it's fine by now. I'll show you guys what the valve looks like now that I've applied the 400 grit silicone carbon. And it's exactly as I'd hoped, as you guys will be able to see. Very much in the center, that's what you want, as you guys can see. That valve is absolutely perfect. It's not too high, it's not too low, perfectly in the center. And that's what I was trying to tell you guys in the past about grinding valves, okay? And lapping valves. This is ideally what you want, as you guys can see. This valve, I have no doubt, will be absolutely perfect in that engine. I'm not gonna have any loss of compression whatsoever. Now, I could potentially go, like I said, with a 600 and a 1,000, but it's not necessary. I will tell you guys that um, this bore on this engine, okay, was affected because of the old rings. It does have some scuffs, it does have some scarring, so bear that in mind. I will be showing you the oil wiper rail in the next video. I have heard someone pull up just now, so I'm about to cut this video a little short, guys. I apologize for that. Um, I'll be back as soon as I can. Until the next video, YouTubers.